For those of you under 10,000 subscribers looking to grow their channel audience, viewership, and even eventually become monetized to start making passive income, this is the video for you. Starting off with number one on this list is figuring out your channel identity. In the beginning stages of your YouTube channel, you may not know right away what you want to be posting. So it is totally all right to just post a variety of content just to see what sticks. If you can manage posting 30 to 50 videos that you just feel like making on your channel, this won't only just show you what video will get viewership and subscribers on your channel, but it'll also start developing your skills with video editing, filming, titles, thumbnails, the whole process. Next up on this list is what value are you going to give users? You have to offer something to your viewers. Are you the most skilled player at a game? Are you showing tips and tricks, tutorials? Are you showcasing the updates of a game? Are you reviewing games? What's going to be the genre? Uploading gameplay with no commentary or talking about your personal life over gameplay is just not gonna work. For 99% of y'all, you grow by finding a niche. If there's a game out there that has an audience already on YouTube, you can start making content on that topic to gain a portion of that viewership. Faster growth has definitely been historically tied to playing popular games, but the problem with this is that if the game dies out, that means your channel viewership can fade along with it. So it's important to have a balance between personality, the value you provide to your audience, and evolving your content over time. Basically, don't do the same exact content forever because that's not gonna allow you to grow. What about when it comes to shorts versus long form content? If you're on the train of wanting to make shorts, 100%, go for it. It's one of the easiest ways to grow your channel. Plus, YouTube is gonna start bridging the algorithm between long form and short form content so that viewers who are watching your shorts will get recommended your long form videos. When it comes to the topic that you're gonna do your video on, research, research, Research! I've failed here so many times not understanding what my viewers want to see. Not what I want to make a video on, but what do you guys want to see? One of the easiest things you can do is utilize the YouTube search engine. Just type in something that you're looking for and see what the top results are within the things that you're searching up. You can even add an underscore in between certain words of your phrase to expand your search even further. If you sign up with vidIQ, you can go to your vidIQ dashboard and go to the questions feature. And this is where you can look up certain topics to see what people are searching within that niche or what questions they're asking. I just found this recently and it is literally gold and it's completely free. Once you have an idea figured out, write it down, plan it out, just don't wing it. Even if you know a topic well, it's good to structure it out within, let's say a OneNote page. This allows you to put your ideas out on paper so that you can make your video as unique as possible and confirm that this is something that your viewers really wanna see. With your videos planned out, now you need to execute the filming process. Of course, the big thing you're always gonna need is video equipment. It's not always necessary to spend lots of money on gear. You can use your phone. These have great cameras. If anything, I'd recommend investing in a solid quality microphone because audio is gonna take your videos farther than you think. If you're streaming or recording gameplay, both the PlayStation and Xbox have built-in controls for being able to capture footage completely for free. And if you're using a PS5 or PS4, you can download ShareFactory to edit your gaming videos directly on the console. You can even create a thumbnail in this application for your YouTube video. Now the functionality behind those features can be limited at times, so if you want a more custom setup with the capture card, you'll want to get a computer around these specifications that you see on screen for either macOS or Windows. If you want some recommendations, I have a whole Amazon affiliate link page that you can check out in the description below. When you're doing your recordings, it's best to set aside some quiet time. That means this time is uninterrupted. There isn't noise going on or people bothering you while you're trying to film. If you're a kid trying to do YouTube, which I know a lot of you guys are, I was myself, I tried to film my videos after school because I didn't have my family there and I could just do my thing, zone in and make dope videos. As an adult, it's a little bit trickier because you have a lot less time at your disposal. You might have to film at night when everybody's asleep and then you can edit during the day whenever it's noisier. That also can play into your energy levels. You don't wanna work an entire day and then you're, you're coming back and filming a video and you're absolutely exhausted because that's gonna come through onto the camera and your video just won't be as good that that way. This might have some of you guys just filming on the weekends. You can batch film if you want. If you're doing commentary over your gameplay, you just don't have to have a one and done shoot. If something's missing, feel free to re-record it so you have it. Within your videos, you don't want to use closing ending statements. Like this is the last to finish things off. 
That'll do it. Thank you for watching. Saying those things will have your viewers scrolling to see what's the next thing to watch, even though your video isn't even finished yet. Now, how's your guys' video editing software? Is it good? Is it slow? The one that I use is Final Cut Pro 10 to make all of the videos that you see on this channel. You can also check out Adobe Premiere, and for some free video editors, you can check out Video Proc Vlogger or DaVinci Resolve. If you're using a mobile phone to edit your videos, I definitely recommend checking out Adobe Rush, VN Editor, and Filmora. Once you're actually in the flow of editing your gaming video, there are some tricks you can use to refocus people's attention while they're watching. That way they don't lose interest in the video. If you're doing a face cam, you can use multiple angles that you switch between. Changing the scenery or gameplay every five to eight seconds. Asking a question in the video using text, starting and stopping music. Using a prop, adding video effects, adding sound effects. Edit with the viewer's auditory and visual senses in mind. Which reminds me, don't just leave your gameplay footage as is. Add some saturation and some color to it, even a little bit of contrast. Look at the differences between the original footage and then the edited footage. Which one looks better to your eye? Getting to the point within your video is very important. So your first edit might be, let's say, 10 minutes long. Maybe your next walkthrough of that same edit, you can get rid of redundant language and cut it down to maybe seven minutes, getting to your point even faster. Viewers can always rewatch, but if they have to hear you say the same things over and over and over and over and over again, it can become a drag for the viewer. If you don't know where to get music for your videos, then definitely check out Upbeat as they have a massive catalog of music that you can use free without copyright issues. Signing up is completely free and you get 10 downloads a month to use the music that you downloaded in your videos, just go ahead and copy the credits and paste that into the video description. With the full plan, you don't have to do that anymore as you can whitelist your channel, plus you can download as much music as you want. And what's great about Upbeat is that it's cheaper than all the competitors out there. You guys can go ahead and check out Upbeat using my link in the description below. When it comes to the thumbnails that you wanna have your face on, don't just record your video and then go back through your editing software to find a random freeze frame. Take still images or make some poses within a video so that you can freeze frame those and have a much better quality looking picture that you'll put on your thumbnail. Then you can use tools like remove.bg to remove the background from your image so that you just have yourself for the cutout. Then you can move that transparent image over to a graphic design tool such as Canva, which is completely free to use by the way, and you can create nice looking thumbnails for your videos. If you wanna get even more control over your thumbnails, definitely use Photoshop, GIMP, PixLR. They have more functionality, which makes them a little bit harder to use, but I'd say those are the better options in the longer run to give you full control over your thumbnails. Making the thumbnail, if you're gonna have your face in it, it's best to have that to the right side and the text to the left, as people will tend to read left to right. Also, try to follow the rule of thirds when making a thumbnail. Have a place for your primary graphic or face, a spot for your text to be legible and big, all on top of your background. Having paragraphs of text across your thumbnail will just be hard to read. That also goes for the objects or graphics. Don't make those tiny either. Some great fonts you can use are Poppins, Helvetica New, Bebe's New, Future Bold, and if you wanna go a little bit more fun, check out Burbank Condensed. The colors you use on your thumbnail should be complementary to each other, giving your thumbnail a nice contrasting look. That means using colors on the opposite sides of the color wheel, such as pairing yellow with purple or blue. Make sure you create multiple variations of the thumbnail, so that way if your video isn't doing so hot after maybe a day or so, then you can switch it out to see if it can improve with the new thumbnail. But what if you could test out your titles and thumbnails before your video went live? VidIQ offers a title generation tool that'll recommend different title options based off your current title. A site that I personally use is Title Case Corrector, and that just makes sure that the letters that are supposed to be capitalized are actually capitalized within my title. Then I can take that title to web effects. Depending on how easy it is to read, you'll get a certain score. The higher the score, the more legible it is to lower reading levels, which is important if you think about it because the average reading level in the United States is 7th to 8th grade. You can also use Thumbs Up TV to check how your thumbnail and title would look on a variety of different displays. But some things you want to keep in mind when you're generating your title is that it should have one of the following characteristics, such as having a negative or differing opinion than other people uploading the same content, curiosity, fear of missing out, 
Is it a secret? If it's a trending topic, make sure that's a part of the title. Another thing I recommend is don't be afraid to share your thumbnail and title with friends and even family to get their two cents on how good or bad something is, as they may have a different perspective than you on how good a thumbnail is. With your video uploaded, make sure you take full advantage of the tags, in-screen elements, and cards. Tags should be terms that people would typically search to find your video or misspellings. And with the cards, place them at the halfway point or further in your video because if you have them too far in the front, people could click on those and get off your video. Respond to comments. I can't tell you how many small YouTubers I've seen that just ignore the comment section of their video. It, it baffles my brain. Like, what are you doing? Engaging with your viewers is so important so you can help build that relationship so that you can get a returning viewer. If you feel like you just don't have time to look at the comments coming through to your channel, an easy way to fix this problem is to get the YouTube Studio app on your mobile phone. You can easily pull up your comments at any time and even check your analytics to help you make better decisions on future videos to do. The skills to develop doing YouTube stretch pretty far. For a gaming channel, you're gonna need to know how to work your camera gear, lighting, your computer, to stream or record, how to promote your channel in the right way, studying the topics and researching what videos you should do, creating the thumbnails and titles to catch people's attention, the performance on camera or behind the microphone. And then when you actually get monetized, you have to manage that revenue stream. Yeah, that's a lot. The more you do this stuff, your skills will compound. It won't happen overnight, but it'll gradually happen. Next up, you should be following expert YouTube channel growers on YouTube and Twitter. Channels like vidIQ, Roberto Blake, Nick Nemen, Ed from Film Booth, Patty Galloway, these guys will post advice and videos on how to better your channel. I'll leave a link to their pages in the description below, but definitely check these guys out as this is the primary thing that they do. No matter the niche, it doesn't just have to be gaming. So be patient. Young Padawan, things will come in time. This is not a sprint, this is a marathon. Some people have done YouTube for years until they saw any traction. It just takes time. This isn't to discourage you, of course, but you have to enjoy the whole process of making YouTube videos. You just can't be in it for money or fame. That's that You're not gonna get ahead that way and you're just gonna be frustrated and end up quitting. I'm still learning after achieving 100,000 subscribers and doing over 500 videos, which most of them are unlisted because they were some of them are just crazy, but I'm continuing to grow myself and share the advice that I have here. Which leads me to the final point of the video is do some streams on your YouTube channel because it's a great way to help engage yourself with your audience and talk with them in real time. Click the video on screen if you wanna learn how to start streaming on YouTube in five minutes, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure you like the video, of course, because you already did that, because you're awesome. See y'all, peace.